Edgar. What up? What are we doing? Trying to make breakfast at fucking 5.30 in the morning. And it's freezing. We weren't supposed to really be in Gunnison last night, but I think this spot's going to be pretty epic if we're here long enough for the sunrise, which is almost two hours away. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, it is pitch black. The only thing we do know is there is some rocks somewhere over there, yonder. And we pulled into this campsite stupid late. Not stupid late, it was like what, nine o'clock at night? Maybe 8.30, but I mean, it gets dark at like 7, 7.20 now, so it seems a lot later than it actually is. So yeah, welcome to the big one. Big one being the biggest that we've ever done. Which, uh, you'll find out in like 30 seconds when we get there. <laughs> so hopefully this video is going to be a little bit better than most. Um, it's also going to be longer. It might be a couple parts. Hopefully we get some daylight out here so we can show you the campsite better via drone. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Also, if it'll let us take off, because apparently, according to DJI app, there's a no-fly zone, like, where that mountain is, or hill rock is. Like, like 50 yards away? <laughs> yeah. It's not very far, so we might not even be able to fly. But, we want to get on this trail early. We have a long, long couple days of driving in front of us. Hopefully not three. We kind of want to get done in two, so we can have one extra day of play. So we're going to warm up, have some breakfast, and hit the road. What's up, guys? So, we are at the trailhead, or what we think is a trailhead, because directions say there's a flat area to stage off-road vehicles. But we are doing the Rim Rocker. We're currently in Montrose, Colorado. We are going to Moab. Rim Rocker is a 160 mile stretch of multiple trails linked up together and it's called the Rim Rocker. We are airing down to about 25 PSI. We could go down further. This is the first time we're ever airing down, so we're gonna give it a try. Um, I do have an air compressor, I've always had one, but these new tires are a little bit stiffer than the old ones. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it a go and air down. So we're gonna air down to 25 and uh, hit this trail. Should be two to three days. Not sure. We have maps. We have the directions. We're just gonna go for it. Here it is, guys. The first signpost, the Rim Rocker. Montrose to Moab. We are three miles into the trip. Well guys, we are about 20 miles into the trail. And it is, so far, it's just this smooth graded dirt road. Seen a lot of animals, a lot of cows, some deer, a lot of hunters. It is this time of year, time of year to go hunting. And uh, as we're driving down this road, I realized in my prep video, I completely forgot, I haven't recorded a video since I got this six and a half foot awning which Edgar and I had to make custom brackets for. We also have an annex room for that, which is why the bed of my truck seems way more full than it is normally, because I added another tote with the annex room, if needed. So, yes, yeah, pretty good so far. Airing down the tires to about 25 PSI is definitely more floaty. 
it's our first time doing it. I'll also say that these lights at night, because we left the campsite at 6 o'clock in the morning, no light. We couldn't really show the campsite in the uh, daytime, but it was... These lights are fantastic. They are super bright. The only thing I wish is I wish I had a tall one maybe up there to shine more going down like this instead of the low one, which on a hill, you know, when I'm going up a hill like this, the light doesn't go up the trail so much. But yeah, we're going to continue going on. I think we might put up the drone here for the first time. But yeah, this is pretty fun. Um, so far, I'm 20 miles in. Oh, I guess while you're setting this up, I'm going to explain how we're uh, navigating. So, not only do we have screenshots of the detailed instructions, but I also have Onyx maps. And I downloaded the trail. So these work offline. And I'm able to follow the trail on that, as well as the detailed instructions. Let's get this drone up. So we're two tenths of a mile, uh, two tenths of the way through. What do you think of this one so far? Uh, so far it's been really easy. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. It turns moderate when we end up, went through Utah. <laughs> We're at... It is gorgeous though. There are tons of aspens. Most of them have already dropped their leaves. Yeah, we're just past peak. But oh well. There's tons of cows. We've seen a bunch of deer as well. That is a good view. Imagine if it was peaked. Peak colors. Maybe we might hit peak colors in Utah or something. Lower in elevation. Maybe, but we'll see soon enough.
guys, just look at this view. It's pretty cool with the river right there. There's Highway 141 down there. It's remnants of the old mining community that used to mine out of here. We are almost about halfway through. Utah is just around the corner, essentially. But... We're enjoying it so far, right? Yeah. One technical part so far. Not bad. Wasn't bad. I did hit something in the bottom of my truck, but uh, no damage. So go, to go Toyota on that front. So far though, it's getting a little warm. Sun's blazing today. And we're enjoying this trail. We're going along this canyon wall here for a while. And pretty soon we're gonna link up with the highway down there so we can cross the river and continue on. Put it done. So we just finished our second stretch of pavement and we are now on the last stretch, the almost final stretch of the trail. Uh, we are, so we started here, we came all the way down through and then this is all pavement right here through Nukla and then it continues dirt from right here. We came around, around along the canyon, came up here along this stretch of 141 and now we're right here about to finish off Colorado as Colorado Utah border. After Utah Colorado border, we continue on through LaSalle Mountains and then keep going. We're going to be completionists. We are not going to sk skip out here or down here. We're going to go all the way through into Moab on dirt. We're no longer seeing pavement the rest of this way. We are more than halfway through, I think. But, um, yeah, it's about lunchtime, so I think we're going to keep going. Maybe find a spot to stop and eat, because we are actually making pretty good time. But progress, I think, will be a lot slower on Utah side. So let's hit the road.
we're doing an interview thing, right? Not That's really. what this is, an interview, like they always do with the NFL overlanding videos. We could. Yeah. So anyways, I think this part of the trip is going to be pretty long, video-wise. I'm sorry about the wind. It's pretty windy here. We are, we hit the National Forest. We're maybe, what, a mile, two miles out from the Colorado-Utah border. He doesn't really know. No, we're I don't pretty really close. Know. Yeah, we're close. I looked at the map and it's it's closer than we have been so far. It is, what time is it? 153. Oh, yeah. We've been going since seven o'clock in the morning on this trail. We've made really good progress. From like waking up at like five, 5.30 yeah. this morning. Yeah. But um, we don't know where we're gonna call tonight. I think some people recommended the Buckhorn. Buckhorn? Buckeye. Buckeye. Anyway, campground up here right before the Utah border. I don't know if we're gonna do that or if we're gonna continue on into Utah. Uh, apparently we've been making very good time. But yeah, quicker than usual, I think. I don't know if it's because there's not a lot more people on the trail or Josh has just been flat footing it the entire time. Yeah, I'm not easy <laughs> on my truck. But I may have hit skid plates a few times. Yeah, got some footage of that. Um, yeah, been pretty fun so far. Actually kind of easy, to be honest. Um, besides going slow on most parts, it's it's been a really easy trail. Some cool views here and there. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really not bad. Uh, after you get past Highway 141, it gets slightly more technical. But I mean, he's taking it slow. I have a stock truck. I mean, I could have done this with my old tires. A couple steep inclines. Right. I didn't put it in four-wheel drive until I wanted a little bit more assistance going downhill with braking. I think you probably could have done it without yeah. four-wheel drive. I went without four-wheel drive for a long time. Yeah. But I think we're going to call part one, this one, done, and we'll pick up part two pretty much when we leave here. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching. And I guess I don't really ask for subscribers. so. Come back and watch the next one, I guess. I don't I don't ask for subscribers. What is that? Why do people beg and plead for likes and comments? Because they get enough money to where it's worth them mentioning it. That's why. Yeah. No, we don't make any money from this. We just do it for the fun of it. And I lose show. money doing this. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm broke. <laughs> don't let my nice things fool you. I'm broke.